Hi, I'm Ian Range from Range Education. And I'm Daniel Lawrence from Rock Tape UK. And in this video, we're taking a look at the condition of tennis elbow and what taping can do to help with that. We'll be showing you how to tape and talking about the underlying mechanisms of taping applications. We have a bite-sized CPD video on the condition of tennis elbow, how to assess it, treat it and rehabilitate it. If you want more information on that, follow the links below, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel or go to www.rangeeducation.co.uk. And for more information on Rock Tape products and education, please visit rocktape.co.uk. So if you uh, want to watch or have watched our bite-sized CPD video for tennis elbow, you will have seen assessment techniques, treatment techniques, and rehabilitation techniques. And one of the things we sometimes see and one of the things we talked about was a lateral epicondylitis clasp. And the problem with that is it does actually change the insertion point of the muscle. So while it may relieve the tendon problem in tennis elbow, it can create shortening of the muscle. So what I want to know is, is there a taping technique we can use to take some of the pressure off in uh, the lateral epicondyle in tennis elbow? And I think Dan may have the answer. All right, so this is the taping application for the lateral epicondylitis. And this is actually, Ian, one of the first techniques we teach on our courses. Fantastic. It's a simple technique to do, but it also helps us to highlight the key concepts of taping. And uh, I'll run through those now. The first one is to make sure we have a pain-free stretch through the area that we're taping. And because this condition involves the extensors of the wrist, we're gonna flex the wrist yeah. to get some pain-free stretch through here. I've measured some tape to go across the common extensor origin, so it's starting just above the lateral elbow, and then going down and finishing before the wrist. Tear the backing paper and apply the tape just above the lateral elbow so it then continues over the extensors of the forearm as they fan out towards the wrist and then no stretch on the end. Just to be clear guys, that bit in the middle was paper off tension. So I just lay the tape down as it came off the backing paper. I didn't purposefully add any stretch to it. And that's the first piece. Then we take the decompression strip, which is a small strip of tape that I've measured and I'm cut and it's gonna go across here. And as with every piece of tape, I've cut the edges off to avoid those edges catching on clothing and causing the tape to come off too early. Peel away the backing paper. And then you can stretch the tape and apply it over the most painful area. And you need to find out where that is simply by having a feel and asking the patient, getting some confirmation. Very good, and then applying the tape over here. You don't always have to go directly across horizontally like so, you can angle the tape, and I'm gonna angle the tape to avoid sticking the tape over the front of the elbow, which would just be a bit uncomfortable, as when our model's bending and straightening their elbow, it would be sticking and unsticking in the crevice of the joint. So I've angled the tape for patient comfort, and that is the tennis elbow application. Fantastic stuff. So let me ask you a few questions about what's uh, happening. Um, if you've watched some of these before, you might want to skip this bit. I'm gonna ask Daniel about this decompression section and why that's important, particularly in this condition. What is that decompression part of tape four, Dan? Absolutely. We use the decompressions typically over the most painful areas, Ian, and the idea is we are using the elasticity of the tape, working with the elasticity of the skin to create some decompression of the tissue underneath. When I say tissue, what I mean is the skin, but also the deeper layers. So the subcutaneous space has been shown on ultrasound and MRI studies to actually change following the application of tape. So it's thought that some form of mechanical decompression mm. may bring about some of the clinical changes such as reduced pain and improved movement and improved muscle function that we see. So it's one of the key uh, potential mechanisms of kinesiology taping. Yeah. And that is really useful because of the amount of inflammation that is occurring by default in tennis elbow. Uh, and finally, uh, if the decompression strip is doing the work we talked about, why have we followed the extensors down with this piece of tape as well? Mm. What effect is that having? Yep, absolutely. So this is what we refer to as the fibre tape and sometimes referred to as the stabilisation tape. 
The tennis elbow pathology involves the extensors of the wrist. So the idea here is that we've put tape over the extensors of the wrist, which may be experiencing not just pain, but also some muscular dysfunction to some level. And we're looking to try and remedy that by improving the sensory feedback from that area, combining this with rehabilitation and improving the function and reducing the sensitivity of those wrist extensors just there. So that's the purpose of the, the linear strip as well. Yeah, fantastic. So a lot going on there. And uh, you'll have noticed, again, if you go to our Bite Size CPD, with tennis elbow, we often see a lot of shoulder protraction. There are rehabilitation techniques for that, but uh, presumably there is also a taping technique that can help support that. Yes, absolutely. And we'll have a look at that now. Okay, so in a lot of the conditions we're looking at, we might see protracted shoulders, where the shoulders have come very much forward. Turn side on for us as well. And what we want to do, and what we're trying to do in training and with therapy techniques, is get the shoulder to come back. My question, of course, because this is a taping video, is is there anything we can do with the tape to help that happen, both while we're rehabilitating and also so that the uh, client has something they can take away after the session? Yeah, absolutely. And we can facilitate some changes in the position of the shoulder girdle. So if we're instructing a patient to try and move their shoulder girdle back um, and sometimes down, then we can certainly use the tape to facilitate that as well and combine that with stretching and strengthening exercises and postural awareness yep. also. All of which hopefully you will see in the video. If you haven't, have a look at it. It gives you a clue what to do in our bite size CPD. So I've measured a piece of tape to go from the top of the shoulder here, roughly over the acromion, and then to come down over the scapula to the midline of the spine, which I'll turn the model around and show you in just a second. But I've got them positioned in this position here so I can show you my starting point. And that's out over the AC joint, as a, again, as a guideline to give you an idea of where to put the tape, like so. Now, if you have the tape out too wide, it pulls over the tissue there, over the um, lateral glenohumeral joint and the deltoids, which is okay, but just not as comfortable. And if you put it too high over the upper traps, again, the tape is pulling here, and that can be a little bit uncomfortable. So the skin is a little bit tighter, and the tape is anchored better over the AC joint just here. Then, I'm gonna turn the patient around so you can see their back. Peel the backing paper away, so then you've got the tape to stretch and to play with and then apply some stretch. Now from experience, I've found that a little bit of stretch, light stretch is all that you need. In the early days, we used to really yank the tape and put loads of stretch in. Yeah. And although that might look good from our point of view and the patients were standing up incredibly straight, uh, it was found to be quite uncomfortable by patients and they didn't really take to it yeah. so well. So a lighter stretch is all you need because you're not looking to mechanically force the shoulders back. You're just providing a bit of sensory cueing, a bit of a uh, regular reminder, if you will, that there's something there, then they remember why it's there, then they remember what we told them, they remember the exercises, and then they it all fits into a, a bigger picture rather than a piece of tape forcing them yeah. in position. We come down to the midline there and slightly over the midline, and that's no problem, so finishing around there is fine. There's no point bringing the tape all the way around here. Um, you, you would want to cut the tape if that was the case. But there we go, that's a postural application to help with shoulder girdle posture. Pulling the shoulders back slightly and maybe down, but be careful, we don't want to pull the shoulders down too much because we can sometimes cause pain and irritation if we're telling people to always hold their shoulders down as it can put more stress on the brachial plexus and even bring on symptoms of thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, so this pattern is working in a proprioceptive manner? Yes, Ian, it is. Yeah, okay, and I'm interested in the line you've taken here. Um, I have seen people take it just straight around here with the attempt to bring their shoulder back. Is there a reason you've chosen this particular line? Yeah, there is. There's always alternatives with taping. There's no correct one way to tape for everybody. So people are different, whether that's the patient or whether that's you as a therapist or, or um, you know, trainer, you can tape in different ways to suit, to suit you and to suit the patient. So, I mean, you can go horizontally across here as a way of encouraging some retraction of the shoulders. 
but um, I prefer this application here because it's easier to put on, it's comfortable to wear, and patient reports as well have been that it's um, you know, a, a nice technique to have. Yeah. However, I used to use this more horizontal one quite frequently and also get good results with that as well. So mm -hmm. that's an alternative that you could try if necessary. Yeah. And uh, where we see one protracted shoulder, we normally see another. So presumably you would just do this the same on the other side. Most commonly, we symmetrically match the other side like so. Yeah, fantastic. So there we are. Very simple, very helpful, and uh, I suspect a lot more comfortable than some of the devices we can put on to physically pull the shoulders back, yeah. and dynamic, which is always important. Super, thank you. Okay, here's a uh, reflective learning CPD task for trainers. And you might need to look into this one. You have a client who is um, presenting with tennis elbow, they're being treated for it, but they're still playing tennis. Is there anything about the equipment, about the racket, that could be causing a problem with tennis elbow? Uh, if you don't know about this, go and look it up, you may be surprised. And my question for therapists is, the triggers for tennis elbow may be work-related. So what work-related advice and ergonomic advice would you give to patients who are suffering from this persistent lateral elbow pain?